Well, I am, uh, we, we seem to be introducing ourselves by uh, where in Harvard we reside. Uh, I think the, for, this, for purposes here, the uh, best identification is that I'm with the Weatherhead Center, which is an incubator of uh, many things, and including this, and uh, allows uh, people to mix and match across disciplines in a way that has um, been highly productive for me. As you can see, I've included Steve Block as my co-author, and I also misspelled his name in my haste to get my slide up. Hey, Steve, <laughs> don't take it personally. I misspell lots of things. Um, and uh, Steve is an economist from, um, uh, from Tufts. And uh, in, the, in the setting of Weatherhead Center, that works. So um, this, was, this work uh, on the social sciences of, the, um, uh, of, of food um, has uh, been supported and sponsored within that, within that setting. Now, my own work um, is on uh, developing areas um, and uh, on agriculture. Uh, and I, within the developing world, I specialize in the study of Africa, which is, um, as you know, a, a place where the challenges of nutrition um, are, are extremely, uh, extremely high. And in the early years, right after independence, when I was uh, teaching at the California Institute of Technology, uh, I got interested in uh, what was called at the time Africa's poor start. And by poor start, I mean uh, that it, uh, when it stumbled out of the gate, um, it had 75, over 70 percent, about 75 percent on average actually, of the population living in rural areas and engaged in farming. And yet it was not, it, 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 was, uh, it was starvation. Uh, and there were importations, uh, and the population was sustained by importing food from abroad. Um, so why this, why this failure, this fundamental failure of performance, of economic performance in Africa? And uh, this led me to a line of work um, which looked at the political roots of it. Um, and the political roots seem to, um, why is this not going forward? Okay, uh, seem to indicate that the incentives for politicians were such uh, that they were adopting policies, politically winning policies, that sustained them in power, that were suppressing markets that were providing incentives for food production in Africa. Um, there were, uh, on the consumer, on, on, in terms of food uh, purchasing, uh, there were monopolies uh, or, or monopsities uh, that were uh, forcing farmers to, sing, to, to market through a single channel controlled by the government that maintained low prices uh, so as to uh, maintain afford affordable food uh, for urban uh, constituents. And, um, and, the, and the firms themselves uh, were selling their goods at high prices because the firms were tended to be monopolies, many of them government owned. Uh, and of course the farmers were the primary, uh, with 70% of the people in agriculture, the farmers were the majority of the consumers. So they were being charged high prices on the one side and being offered low prices on the other, which meant that their profits were driven down and their incentives to farm were driven down uh, and to produce were driven down. Now the question is why, that, that I tried to figure out, was, and, and this was work um, that I was doing unknowingly to either one of us in parallel with the World Bank. Uh, Elliot Berg was doing uh, research of the World Bank, c c uh, collecting evidence. I was doing research as an individual scholar collecting evidence, and we independently uh, came up with the same, with the same, the same findings, which increased our uh, confidence in what we were seeing, uh, our, our interpretation quite, quite a bit. Well, then the question becomes, why, why do this dumb thing? Why ruin the fundamentals of your economy? These are agrarian economies, why destroy them? Um, why distance, why, and, and, and the answer was the, the nature of the institutions uh, led uh, to these choices of policies and in the following manner. Most of the African society, governments at this time were authoritarian. These are single party systems. These are military governments and personal dictatorships. Less than a third of them had competitive political parties. 70% uh, or, or more uh, 
had uh, authoritarian governments. And in authoritarian regimes, um, their, their citizens get represented. The interests of citizens get represented. But they get represented in a very biased way. Um, the urban sector consists of a few large firms, each one highly uh, large in these very small markets, and um, living uh, cheek by jowl in the industrial parks that are outside uh, Nairobi and uh, Lagos and everywhere, other places. So they're economically concentrated and they're politically concentrated. Being economically co concentrated, the firm uh, will, will demand that the government give it, give it access to raw materials at a low price or will join with the workers in saying we want to have low wages because 60% of their expenditures are on salaries um, and they don't want strikes. Uh, and so they're lobbying for this kind of, uh, dis the, these kinds of price distortions that, that uh, undermine incentives for farmers. Uh, and th so they demand these policies. They can organize in support of the policies because they live close together, because many of them are uh, government owned. They have access to the ministries. And so they're highly, uh, so representation takes place in an interest group mode and the firms thrive in that kind of political institutional environment. The farmers, however, each farmer is tiny. Uh, if he lobbies for something, uh, the costs of lobbying will exceed the benefits to his, him and his family. Um, and they're also dispersed all over the place. So low incentives to lobby, high costs of lobbying. The farmers, even though they're a numerical majority, are a silent majority. And the result is you get this shift of relative prices against agriculture. So that was the work I did then. What's happened in the meantime? Africa has all of a sudden become, uh, has started to grow. Um, whoops. <laughs> uh, and and, um, and, uh, and, and, and it, one of the reasons it has grown, and this is the work Steve and I have done, is because productivity has in, increased greatly uh, in the largest single sector, which is agriculture. Why has productivity increased greatly? Because these policies have, have been uh, no longer prevail in many countries. Why is that? It's because the nature of the political institutions has changed. We now have in Africa competitive party systems. In a competitive party system, politics is dominated not by interest groups, but by party competition. And parties wanting majorities to win elections um, find most of the votes in the rural areas. 70% of the people are in agriculture. So the farmers that were disempowered under interest group politics are empowered under party politics. And this is, I, Stephen, my, Stephen my, um, my research indicates that this is one of the reasons um, that you've gotten this surge of growth uh, in uh, the African miracle in the, in the last several years. Yeah.